Hi everyone, I'm Raif Darazi, and in this video, I am really looking forward to sitting down with our guest, Christian Philip Mercer Hall, to talk about his incredible new app being released later this year, 2023, which is built for the HIV community. I've seen a lot of well-intentioned apps pop up, but I've never been as excited or hopeful that an app will fill the need that our community so desperately has. And uh, he has invested an incredible amount of time, money, and resources, so we will jump into that, as well as getting to know the man behind this tech startup. All right, Christian, thank you so much for joining. I know you're insanely busy. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, insanely busy, like you said, but yeah, I I'm really good. I'm really excited. We've got so much going on. Um, yeah, very exciting times. Okay, so I'm going to start with a general question that I ask all my guests, which is, what is your assessment of the current state of the global HIV AIDS epidemic? Okay, my evaluation on the global HIV and AIDS epidemic at the moment is that um, we've made some great ground. We, uh, you know, over the last sort of decade, certainly um, over the last 40 years, we, we've come an incredibly long way. I think that now more so than ever, um, all of the minority voices within this within this community really need to come together um, um, and and speak uh, you know speak the same truth and and really try and get the governments around the world to um, to back our community um, and you know and the preventative measures um, you know the the needs for of the people living with HIV within the community um, try and come together as one and um, uh, and, and help us overcome this this epidemic. Uh, and certainly, slow slow that rate down. Um, but yeah, I think truthfully, you know, from a high level, I think it's a really positive note. I think we should be proud of where we are. Um, you know, there's there's still somewhere to go, but ultimately, you know, I, there's certainly some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, you know, a lot of people have the same responses. Yes, we've we've come a long way in the last forty years, and there's so much to be excited about and thankful for. But yet we still have quite a ways to go. And I agree with you mm -hmm. in, in, when you mention unity and I, and not just in the sense of appealing to organizations outside of the HIV community, but also within the HIV community. I think there's some fragmentation mm -hmm. that's happening and some infighting and, and we're not as unified as, as, as we should be. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, I do want to talk about you personally a bit and get to know your story, how you, got into this space. But before we do, just as a little bit of a teaser, can you give me a brief elevator pitch of your app, what it's called, what it's about, <laughs> and then we'll come back to that. Of <laughs> course. Um, so Positive Plus One is the social network empowering the HIV community. Think of Positive Plus One like a very centralized resource, a hub for all things HIV. You can find connection, education, guidance, and support all in one place um, you can consume that education and guidance at a pace that suits you um, you know it's, imagine it being a, a best friend in your pocket a, a voice um, a set of ears to listen you know to listen to you um, anytime that you need it um, you know we've built in some amazing tools and resources within the platform that we're super proud about and yeah it's like i said it's very much a centralized hub a resource a tool for, for this community okay great awesome so guys positive plus one is the name of the app keep that in mind we're going to get back to that just a little bit but first i want us to get to know christian a little better so tell me where are you from where did you grow up okay so i am from leeds in the uk which is a very northern town um <laughs> Um, some of you, some of you guys watching this might know the football team Leeds United. That tends to go a long way when I'm trying to describe where I'm from. Um, yeah, and <laughs> um, I, I still live just outside of Leeds. Um, you know, I'm based in the UK. Uh, I'm building positive plus one from here. And I know you have some businesses that you've developed already. Can you tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, some interesting stories coming your way. Um, so I actually, um, I, look, I, I came from a corporate sales background originally, went on to work for a startup company, um, and then took a complete left turn, um, and went into hairdressing, specifically barbering, 
opened up um, a, a barbershop with a tattoo studio. That particular business burnt down. A deli next door caught fire and, and burnt down. Um, and then I used the insurance money from, from that and put it into Positive Plus One, um, whilst also launching um, another salon, uh, which I've since you know gone on and sold. But yeah, so now Positive Plus One is my main focus. But yeah, I built, I built a couple of businesses. Um, I've been through the, the blood, sweat, toil and tears that come with that, um, which has served me quite well when it comes to uh, building this, this business, that's for sure. And how did you go from uh, taking part in a startup to saying, I'm going to open up a barbershop? Did you have experience? Like, what, how did that happen? come no. about? Uh, so, gosh, when I was, when I was like 19, 20, um, I played rugby in Australia. And we were so, so broke that we couldn't afford to get his hair cut. So I basically taught myself how to cut my own hair and how to cut some of the rest of the rugby lad's hair. Um, and felt that I had a bit of a knack for it. Uh, I was a bit of, you know, I felt like a bit of a natural. <laughs> um, when I left the corporate world, because um, I was, I'd just grown tired of the corporate world, I thought, I actually went to go get my hair cut. And um, the guy who was cutting my hair said, next time you come, I'm going to be opening up my own shop. Uh, this is where I will be. And I left that haircut thinking, I could do this. I was at a bit of a loose end. I didn't really know what to do with my life. You know, did I go back down corporate or try something different? And I asked him, I reached out to him and said, if I pay for my own course, um, will you guarantee me a job? And he actually came back to me and said, I don't have any staff yet. Do you want to be my apprentice? And that's how I got involved in the hairdressing world. Um, but given the business acumen that I'd acquired through, you know, working for startups, working in corporate business, I, I had a, a, an ability um, to see things from a from a, a commercial point that a lot of hairdressers and salon owners didn't, um, and I yeah it didn't take me very long before actually you know some of the places where I'm working um, I could do this better myself, and that's exactly what I did. Fantastic. Okay, so what inspired you to create this app? It's it's another left turn that there's a missing link there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So when I worked in the in the corporate world, um, I lived in the centre of London, and a colleague of mine who became a friend, um, a real socialite. We used to go out a lot. We'd have some, we'd have, we had some great times together. Suddenly, um, went AWOL from work. I couldn't um, I couldn't seem to get a hold of him. Tried to call him. Tried texting. I eventually went to HR and said, look, I know you're not allowed to give me his address, but I am concerned for him. Um, wrote, him a, wrote him a letter and sent it through. Um, and it was just like, you know, speak to me. I just want to make sure you're okay. Um, and upon receiving that letter, he actually, he called me and invited me around. And I went round to his house. Um, <clears throat> and when I arrived at his front door and he opened, he was a shell of his former self. Uh, and at that point, I knew something wasn't quite right. We went in, we sat down, and he shared with me that he was he was now living with HIV and that he'd taken that time to come to terms with what that meant for him. Um, and I, I basically had a conversation and said, how can I help? Um, and two key questions that came out of the back of that conversation were, how do I tell anybody and where do I meet somebody? He was a young guy. He still wanted you know, to meet someone, still wanted to be in love, still wanted to have sex and, you know, and still live, wanted to live a full, happy, healthy life. Um, so I went out and looked online and couldn't find anything that really seemed to meet those needs properly. Um, I then reached out to a lot of charities and support services. Um, I spoke to them, convinced them to let me sit into their support group sessions, asked the people attending those sessions very similar questions and got very similar answers. And this had been something that had played on my mind, um, you know, at, at the time, and I'm not shy to admit this, I didn't know anything about HIV. I didn't know anything about building a tech company. Um, but, you know, I, I knew that I just wanted to help in any way that I could. And having uncovered a couple of truths, um, I was surprised to see that there wasn't something like positive plus one that existed already. Um, and yeah, whilst I was, you know, whilst I was, working in the startup role 
and acquiring some of those other skills it was re you know making me believe that actually maybe i could do this um and then you know i'd be i'd be really trying to get into the community and and, and the truth is um as a person not living with hiv as a white heterosexual bloke um i felt like i actually faced a little bit of um um, a, a little bit of the dark buzz in on me, in on me initially, because people people maybe thought that I was trying to um, you know do this for the wrong for the wrong reasons, um, and it's taken me time to to overcome that and to you know to look like I am uh, authentic and, and for people to believe that um, you know I am in this for all the right reasons. Um, so yeah, whilst I was building the the, the barb shop, um, you know, I really started to knuckle down onto positive plus one and maybe what that idea would look like and what it was what it's its main objectives were and then fortunately unfortunately when the salon burned down um like i said before i i, I re i used some of those the money from my insurance and i, I chucked it into positive plus one because i believed in it i believe that it's got the power to do amazing things um, and that really then set the ball rolling um and yeah it, it, it gave me some good traction enough traction to go on and raise some more money but yeah, ultimately, look, um, I set out to build this business to help one friend, and it just turned. It just so happens that that one friend shared a lot of pain points with a lot of people around the world, and that's what Positive Plus One is for. Great, yeah. I mean, you're when you said that you didn't know much of anything about HIV. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, even myself, even though when I was in my, I would say, late teens, early twenties, I was doing um, volunteer work for a nonprofit that was sp solely focused on educating 18 to 24 year old men about STI prevention, including HIV. I was doing that for mm -hmm. like two years, at least. I still didn't know wow. a single thing about what it meant to actually, once you're diagnosed, what happens? I, mm. I didn't know a single thing. I thought you would be dead in two to three years. I didn't know anything about medication. I didn't know about U equals U, any of that. So it's, you know, it's, it just speaks to a big void in a gap in, in education, I think, not just yeah. here, but everywhere in the world. That's, that's that, part of part of the need that, for something like this. Yeah, that's one of the things that really stood out to me um, was that, you know, post that diagnosis, a lot of people were handed a pamphlet on here's the medication and, and you know, this is how you adhere to this medication. And not there wasn't really much else from a route to care. There wasn't much in the way of a guidance to be like, these are the, all of the local organizations around you. Um, and these are the, this, is, this is how they can support you. We built that into the app. Here is, um, you know, here is some education and some information for you to be able to consume ahead of going to see someone face to face and talking about your, your newfound status with a person you've never met before. Um, we've got we built that into the platform so you can hear other people sharing their story about their journey of post-diagnosis living with hiv um right through to you know to the first time they next had sex or went on a date or whatever it might be um yeah we we, we built all of those things in the positive for swim solely for those reasons to help to help with that that area that that, that area of unknowns those those multiple questions that you will have uh, you know after that diagnosis yeah, I think there's something uniquely uh, vital for the HIV community. It's in something known as wraparound care. Uh, people have different, similar terms for it, but essentially it's this idea that um, for those of us living with HIV, it's not just about going to a doctor, getting your script, your medication, getting on medication, mm -hmm. doing your lab work periodically, and then you'll be off on your way. It's this idea that mm -hmm. there's, especially for people living with HIV, it, there's it's there's so much complexity there and so many socioeconomic factors and all these things impact and have uh, influence on how well someone stays on treatment takes care of themselves so there's stuff yeah. that needs to address stigma and self stigma and having mm -hmm. social support and taking care of people's mental health and and housing and food insecurity and all these things will impact whether someone adheres to their medication and you know, help, yeah. like you said, with romance and dating. So th they seem like, it seems weird. Like, I think if you're outside of the HIV community or you're not familiar, it's like, I don't understand why 
they need all this help in all these different areas. It doesn't make sense. Like, I someone might have a different disease, and it's like none of that is really considered. But it's proven and it's shown that all of these things impact the success rate of people getting on medication, staying on treatment, and and doing well um, as they live with HIV. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I want to posit a question to you. It's a little pointed, but I think it's it's important to ask, and I and I'm, I'm sure you'll have a great response to it. Which is, and I know that people are going to watch this and say, "Look at this white, straight, hetero, cis male taking command of this app." And why should mm-hmm. he be the one to to be the leader in this in this way? Why you? Yeah, and that is that's a great question, and it's one I've been asked many times. And that's one that I'm actually, I'm most excited to answer. Um, <clears throat> I think it's fair to say, and, and I'm sure, and many people have agreed with me in the past, the white heterosexual community tend to be the, one of the most stigmatizing communities in the world of all things. Um, and I'm a white heterosexual male and an advocate and an ally for people living with HIV in the HIV community. And I, I, I'm trying to use my voice um, as a person not living with HIV, but educated well enough. I'm trying to use my voice to speak to those to, to those people who would typically stigmatize and say, I am just like you and you should, and I'm well educated on this and I, do, I, you know, I don't stigmatize this community and I think that you should do the same. And I think that is exactly why I am the right person. Um, you know, it, it's... People tend to listen more to people they align with. I think we can all agree with that. Um, and I'm, yeah, I am on a self mission to make sure that I can tell as much of the world and educate as many people um, from all different backgrounds. But you know, certainly the ones that stigmatise the most. Um, that you know, you need to change your opinion of what you think HIV is because it is no longer a death sentence. People can have condomless sex and not pass on the virus, uh, you know, some of these stupid myths that it can be passed on through kissing or sharing a toothbrush, they're wrong. Um, you know, sharing a glass, a drink, hugging, you know, all of those things, you're completely wrong. HIV has changed, and that is exactly what I'm trying to get across. Yeah, you're right, and I, um, it's funny because I actually, the one really distinct time that I experienced stigma uh, for HIV was actually going to a barber shop. So it kind of ties in with how you can impact that as well, being a represent, re- representative and being visible in the straight male community um, to normalize that. Uh, I went, I was going to a barber in LA and pretty regularly for a while and we had developed a bit of a rapport. I was going maybe like once a week, I would say, and, and close <laughs> enough that he gave me his cell number and I could just text him, you know. Uh, yeah. And little by little, I was telling him more and more about myself. And then on that last time, I told him that, I was living with HIV and I did all this advocacy work and I showed him, you know, my socials and he, and he looked at it and he was like, wow, like he was just like, wow, man, that's like, that's so incredible that you're doing all that. I don't know how you're, where you find the strength to do that. I, I wouldn't be able to, to do that. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I just got this feeling that he like kind of revered it in a way. And it was a kind of a positive experience and there was nothing weird about it. And then yeah. the next week when I tried to set up an appointment, and texted him and reached out, reached out. Uh, I got no response. There was nothing. And so I thought, okay, he's busy. You know, barbers can be a little flaky, whatever, <laughs> from my experience yeah. here. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I, so I reached out again. Um, I did it several times and uh, I just wasn't getting any response. I thought, okay, well, there's got to be some kind of logical reason. Maybe he went on a vacation. I don't know about. So I called the shop. And I say, hey, I'm looking for so-and-so. And they say, oh, yeah, he's here. He's working with somebody right now. I, you want me to have him give you a call back? I say, sure. I wait. No call back. So mm-hmm. need, needless to say, after about two months, I realized I had been cut off, basically. Yeah. And, I, and I know that was because of HIV. And, and obviously, the, the shop was just the, not the, willing the, to do anything about that. And that's, and that's, sh- that's shocking um, to hear. And, and actually, from the flip side of this is um, when I when I started with Positive for Swan and having the ideas, I, I was I was telling everybody about it and really gauging different people's um, 
um, opinions and ideas and thoughts behind it. In the barber chair, does the barber be stood behind it? I have a very eclectic mix of clients, different people, different backgrounds, so, so diverse. Um, and when I start to tell people, um, strangely enough, two of my clients, and I was very busy at the time, two of my clients then shared with me that they were living with HIV. Um, and, and it really, um, it, that was an amazing experience for me because they were they felt comfortable enough with me to be able to share that with you with myself as you did with your with your barber um, um i suppose that the main difference is is that i i wanted to know everything and more <laughs> um from you know from, yeah from and you created that safe clients. space for them to open up yeah for sure yeah and and i think um by me having those conversations in that barbershop at any time there was five working members of staff and then there was five different clients sat in the chair and maybe a couple of clients sat behind waiting for their haircut. I, I, we had these, these challenging conversations, these debates, and it was a great environment for me to really, that's where my advocacy probably began, you know, showing, telling people um, who wouldn't normally uh, be educated on, on all things HIV, telling them and updating them on what actually that now looks like, what that, what the landscape actually is um, and what truths are. So yeah, uh, quite a funny way to, to put it really. Um, how, like, my yeah, and I think, there, but yeah, I think in many ways, uh, barbershops are a little microcosm of a particular world of, of, of men. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, my story ends well because I found I did find a new barber. Amazing guy. He's one of my close friends now. And he also will talk about it openly in the barbershop. He owns the barbershop as well. So that's great. And, and but even even with him. He did tell me one time um, because he's on social media and he'll put me on his page sometimes and, uh, and other clients as well. And he said that one of his other clients said, hey, you know, I saw that guy on your on your Instagram and I, I see that he's living with HIV. Aren't you worried? Like, what if you cut him with your your buzzer or your scissors or something like that? And there's blood and like and then you use it on another client. Like, aren't you worried that there might be something happens there? And he's like, no, no. He's like, that's not. That's not how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not that's not a thing that you need to yeah. worry about with with barbers. I think I, I think actually a very uh, a very clear thing to make out, and this is something I, I tell people quite a lot. Um, contracting HIV is very difficult. <laughs> it's it, it's it's very difficult. It's not just a it's not airborne like it's a you know it's um it's it's a bloodborne virus and it's very very difficult to contract. So um, a lot of these stupid myths and ideologies and theories that people have um is is crazy but yeah you know undetectable equals yeah. untransmittable and that the truth yeah exactly okay well thank you for answering that um sort of pointed question let's jump into the app so positive plus one is slated to officially launch this year do you have a, a yes. good timeline yeah, so we're looking mid-November um, to go live to the public. Um, we anticipate no later than the 17th of November, so put it in your diaries. We are coming at you. Um, uh, and just to be really clear as well, so Positive Plus One is for both people living with, affected by, and working within HIV. Um, if you are living with HIV and you have questions and you want to be directed to some resources that can help you, you can join Positive Plus One and find those things. If you have a friend, family member, uh, spouse, you know, whoever that that's, you know, diagnosed with HIV, that's living with HIV, um, and you want to learn more and, and you want to understand what it means to and how you can best support that person, um, then you can join Positive Plus One. If you are a person working within HIV and you want to be up to date with, you know, the most... Um, groundbreaking and, and, and uh, you know, listen, hearing from the, the biggest thought leaders you know, in this space, that positive plus one is for you. Um, I am, I'm so proud of what, you know, the team and myself have, have achieved with this. We have focus groups like crazy. Um, we've spoken to hundreds, if not thousands of people, um, right from uh, across the board, uh, across the world. Um, again, you know, I, I make this very clear. HIV doesn't discriminate and neither does our platform. HIV doesn't care who you are, where you're from, what age you are, you know, what background you're from. It doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter. And positive plus one is a safe space for everybody. Um, and you know, we want to be we aim to be as, as inclusive and diverse um, as possible. Fantastically well said. Exciting. Um, so you will have. Can you kind of describe how? Just so we get a better idea of how the app is structured. Is there? Is there like I understand there's resources. Is there? places where people can go to chat like live with other yeah. with other people yeah so you can you can find connection of, of any kind on, on, on positive as well if you want to make some friends this would be a great place to start uh, if you want to you know start to build some romantic connections I, i'm you know i'm not the person to say with you can or cannot do that if that's what you want to do then you go for it <laughs> um, but yeah look i suppose it, this is very much worth saying the platform is free it's free to download, it's free to become a member, it's free to chat, it's free to use the resources. Um, um, we, you know, we understand the needs of, of our community um, um, and, and we wanted to make it as accessible as possible. Um, for transparency, we generate revenue through advertising. Um, we are considering some, some subs, paid subscription um, features in further down the line. Um, you know, we do have some ideas of maybe introducing dating things where you can refine down to things that I would call as deal, deal breakers. Um, again, that's just an, an idea that we're uh, talking about in the background. But right now, our you know our MVP, our you know our core feature, our core platform, is a place where people can meet, chat, connect, find education, guidance, everything you need, all in one space. Amazing, and there I. My understanding is that there's also a place for people who are creating content related to HIV to also be able to to share that in the app. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, of course. Yeah, what what we most want from people um, joining the platform is if you feel comfortable enough to do so and 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 you're ready to maybe take that next step. Um, Positive Plus One is a very safe community, and it, and it's built specifically for the HIV community. Um, and by sharing your story and telling your truths, you, you're you empowering somebody else. You're maybe able to share that you overcame a certain hurdle um, and that will be the exact thing that someone else at the other end needs to hear. Um, and we all need that at different times in our life. We all need somebody to say, I been through what you're going through and I made it out the other side. Um, uh, and, you know, we want people to, to be on the platform and, and creating content that, and sharing those stories and those truths and that authentic journey. We want people working within HIV, um, healthcare providers, uh, to be sharing stories and maybe challenges that they overcame um, from, a, from a medical standpoint. You know, if you're a pharmacist or a, a peer support worker or a, um, um, a, a healthcare practitioner of some kind, maybe sharing your stories and your thought leadership around how to best overcome some of these challenges and hurdles and how to best serve people living with HIV or affected by HIV. Um, we want it to be a really a place where, you know, every, everybody can come and everyone, I, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to say every time you went onto positive plus one, you were able to learn something new, something beneficial. So will there be some kind of sort of a feed, I guess, for lack of a better word, where you, you're yeah. seeing the latest posts from, like you can follow profiles and they can follow you, kind of like other social yeah. apps? Just just like other social social networks, other social platforms. The truth is, um, uh, without plagiarizing, we you know took a look at some of the best platforms and, and what they did very well. Um, and we, you know, we brought those kind of features and things that feel familiar into our platform. So yes, there is a feed. Um, yes, you are able to follow people. You're able to connect with people, which means once you connected, you're actually able to send messages. Um, you know, you're able to like uh, people's content. You're able to comment on people's content. You're able to bookmark uh, people's content, share it to other friends outwardly, um, out of the platform or inwardly to other people within the platform. Um, you're able to find events that might be events that, you know, it might be a drive-in cinema that's local and it's happening. We, you know, we've got a, a great tool that we use that's going to help you. Basically, uh, if, if there was an event, something like that, and you both you and one of the Oliver Connections have liked that, it will give you a prompt to say, 
why don't you both go together? Again, about that empowerment, you know, um, two is stronger than one, that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's just so many, there's so many great features that we built in. Um, um, it, it's not going to feel out of the ordinary for anybody thinking. Um, you're going to you're going to get into the platform. You're going to feel very familiar um, and just like how you, you know, you know how to use it straight away. OK, I'm glad we touched on the social component because, you know, there are a number like I mentioned in the introduction, there are a number of apps that have come out over the years um, aiming to connect people to resources and create the safe space and whatnot. But it's very static. You go in, mm -hmm. there's certain sections you go into, certain buttons you can press, and it is what it is. And that's that's kind of it at the end of the day. But this sounds and feels very dynamic. It's constantly moving and changing. And there's mm -hmm. new things coming in and you're seeing new posts and messages and you can connect with people. So that sounds a, way more vibrant and alive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I, I'd like to think so. At any point, if anything feels stagnant, rest assured that I'm going to be doing something about it. Me and the team are going to be working <laughs> hard to make sure that it doesn't feel that way. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. Amazing. Um, will there be, um, and maybe this is more of a selfish question, be monetization <laughs> opportunities for influencers and or creators in the app? Yeah, we are. Um, that's something that we are considering right now. Um, myself and the product team are trying to uh, find a balance between delivering the product that we have as a core feature and future road mapping. Um, yeah. I think we very much like the idea of being able to share revenue with content creators. Um, it makes it very easy for us to say to people, come and create some content on our platform because, we, you know, there's, there's a um, the ability to earn on there, just like YouTube does. Um, we really like that business model. Um, I think one thing that we're actually uh, we're planning on doing as well is introducing brands that have you know this corporate social responsibility, diversity, and inclusion. Um, we're actually we actually want to act as a as a facilitator for those connections. Um, so you know, if a brand, let's say Nike, as an example, wanted to come on. Uh, and wanted to, you know, to say that, look, you know, we support this community. Um, we want to act as a bit of a, um, uh, a guide, a connector for, and say, well, you know, based upon what your uh, aims are and your, um, your I mean, objectives are, we think that these, you know, creators will be the best people for you. Um, and then, it, you know, it, it sort of mediate that, that collaboration between the two brands. Okay. That so, is yeah. a fantastic, fantastic idea. And that's, that excites me. So. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> um, well, is there anything that we haven't touched on today in this interview that you'd like to cover before we wrap things up? I suppose this is this is an ask for your uh, for your subscribers, the people watching this video, the people listening, whatever medium it is that you're using. Um, the success of Positive Plus One right now shit is very much dependent upon people telling other people, people sharing this podcast this interview um uh, far and wide to people that they think might need it um you know and, and basically being an advocate for positive plus one helping us get in, generate that word of mouth um you know we've uh, I, I use this analogy this metaphor quite a lot um you know we've all been into a great looking bar but if the bar's empty people don't stick around for too long um, and that's what we don't want you know we've got tens of thousands of people pre-registered um, ready to use the platform, which we're very excited about. You know, we want to be at uh, the end of 2024. We want to be at around the 200, 200,000 users mark, um, if not more so. And we can only do that with your help. So effectively, please tell people about Positive Plus One. The uh, link you can pre-register at positiveplusone.com. Um, and yeah, and if you are a person who already creates videos on other socials, uh, telling your stories about HIV, please sign to Positive Plus One, um, you know, create some content for us. It's safe, um, it's secure. Uh, we have other, lots of verification methods in there to keep your um, uh, to keep your privacy, private life private. So yeah, help us, help us. That'd be great. Fantastic. And where else? So I have the link for Positive Plus One. I'll have that down below so that people can register for that and get the latest. Um, are there any other socials or anything like that you want to drive people to as well? Yeah, I, I mean, if you type into um, 
you tap into Instagram, we're positive plus one. TikTok, we are positive plus one. Um, Twitter, X, we are um, pods plus one. Um, uh, LinkedIn, if that's your, your chosen chosen social, uh, again, positive plus one. Um, we try to keep it as you, uh, um, uh, as the same right across the board. But yeah, just type in positive plus one and, and I'm sure you'll probably find us. Okay, I'll make sure to have links to all of those in the socials down below in the description box below this video. All right, Christian, any, um, any final parting words for our viewers? Thank you for listening. Thank you for hearing my story. Um, thank you for being a part of my journey and, and thank you for supporting Rafe and everything that he does. Um, I think that he does a great job of uh, being open and sharing his truths and his authenticity. And um, yeah, I think, you know, you should support him as much as you can. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I, I forgot to mention Christian and I actually met at AFAN, which is the Aid for AIDS Nevada uh, fundraising black and white party. He randomly reached out to me on LinkedIn, said, <laughs> hey, you want to go to this thing? It's uh, this weekend. We'll fly you out. And I'm like, ah, oh, sure, let's go. <laughs> and I just hopped on a plane. I'm not one to normally do very spontaneous things, but I'm, I'm very glad that I did. It was very apparent very early on that he has an extremely big heart. He's very well-intentioned. He's got a lot of skin in the game. And um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, so thank you so much, Christian, for sitting down with me amongst your busy schedule. We'll have to, f do, to do a follow-up to this once the app is live. And then hopefully you can, maybe we can put together a demo or something so we can really walk people through and they can get a, get a yeah, sense for sure. if they're not already registered by then. All right, maybe, everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell so you get a notification every time a new video comes out. You don't want to miss it. And please share this with anyone who might find value in this content. That's the best way that you can support me and my channel. Until next time. Cheers.